here at the Locker Room Report. I'm Brady Beaton. Joined this week after a week off with head coach Paul Winters. Coach, I guess we'll start there. How would you guys handle the bye week, something you haven't had in basically a decade? Had to have been a little bit different experience. Usually, you just to play in 11 straight weeks. Yeah, it was good for us because we were able to go back to fundamentals. Um, mm -hmm. Just special teams doing all fundamental work. Um, offense, defensively, doing fundamental work and just trying to become a better football team. Let's go back and talk about the Saginaw Valley game before we move on to this week's opponent. I thought that first half of football was the best half of football you had played all year. It felt like you were in control of that game in the first half. Second half gets away, but what did you take away, especially from the first half, the positives? Well, it wasn't even just the second half. It was still the same score third quarter. We're winning that game in the fourth quarter. We, we just, um, you know, what we take away from it is, uh, we were able to play physical against a tough physical football mm -hmm. team. Um, our, our defense, I thought, stepped up probably more than it has all season. And, um, you know, that we're just, we're, we're, we're knocking on the door. We're not in the, in the room yet, but we're knocking on the door. Talk about guys stepping up. The one name that I said more, I think, la or two Saturdays ago than I did the entire rest of his career was Brian Hill. I thought he stepped up in a tough spot, and he was flying around. There were, trust me, there were other guys out there making plays, but he was the one that stood out. It felt like every third or fourth place, especially in that first half, you were talking about Brian Hill. You know, you're right. Um, it, it's been a while back, so I've kind of forgotten it. But um, Brian really was the first time he's truly been healthy for more than one week. So um, I think, you know, he's a guy that doesn't have a lot of experience playing, and um, we know he's a good football player. We just got to keep him healthy. Last couple of games, you've had chances to win at the end, um, really the last month or so. How do you take a team that's, you said, knocking on the door and kick it down, and how do you turn these close losses into close wins? Uh, execute. You know, we, we have an opportunity late in the game to execute. We have to learn how to do that. Um, we're, we've been working. One of the things we did last week was um, we, we did our conditioning, and then we went and and said, okay, this is a fourth quarter. Let's go play mm -hmm. some more football. And um, it really tried to put in their minds that we have to play hard and, and fight through any kind of adversity in the fourth quarter. Well, you're going to have to execute, and you probably will face some adversity this week. You get your second crack at Grand Valley, this time on the west side in Lubbers, undefeated number one team in the country, but how is the team feeling going into this? I have to imagine they're chomping at a bit for another chance. Well, you know, we're playing against a great football team, and they, they put it to us pretty good last time. Um, but you said all the things that should fire everybody up. You know, you're playing on the road against your rival. Um, they're the number one team in the country, and um, you, you just have to make up for how you played in the first game. It feels like that you've been able to get parts of the team working at some time. Like sometimes you'll get the secondary playing really well, the offensive line and running back. How do you try to get that one big game where everyone's clicking on the all cylinders at the same time? Get them all healthy. I mean, really, you know, when you think about when guys haven't been performing or a side of the ball hasn't been performing, it's probably because two or three guys are out. And that's really hurt us all year or so. Um, if we can, if we can make it through the week and, and get everybody on the bus, we're going to go and play well. I know uh, against Davenport, the secondary didn't do what you wanted to, but I thought a great bounce back last week or last game against Saginaw Valley. They're going to have another tough test against Grand Valley, but the improvement from one week to the next has to be impressive for you, and at least hopeful that they can repeat that performance at Grand Valley. You're not going to like this, <laughs> but. Brian Hill didn't play against Davenport. <laughs> um, Elijah Folks didn't play against Davenport. So again, if we can get those guys healthy and, and playing well, well, we'll be so much better in the secondary this week. Let's talk about your side of the ball offense. Obviously, between Kendall Williams and Myron Harris, you've really gotten the running attack going. What's going to be the key offensively? Is it just get them going against Grand Valley, or do you have to work a little bit of a pass game in there so it stays open for Kendall and Myron? Well, Grand Valley doesn't really allow you to run the football. They do a great job defending the run, so so we have to be able to throw the football. But the the key to our running the game or running the ball is um, our right tackle 
Blake Bustard has stepped up and just, you know, been lights out the mm -hmm. last few weeks. And, and and he's he's as big as they come and as strong as they come. So we're very excited about his progression. Um, Tyler Schompert has also come around. So the, the big difference in our running game, you know, those running backs are pretty consistent. Um, I think the offensive line has played well. Well, Coach, hopefully they continue to play well, and good luck against Grand Valley. Thank you. He's Coach Paul Winters. I'm Brady Beaton, and you're listening to WDTK, the Patriot.